Hey, I'm Izzy, and you're listening to Real Quick. Check out the rest of the episodes and other amazing content at intheworks.com. Welcome to Real Quick. I'm Izzy, obviously your host, and I'm super excited for my guest today. She's doing such, such, such important stuff for so many people, and I just want to give her the floor to talk about what she's working on, who she's working with, and all the lives that she's impacting on an everyday basis. So without further ado, Kathleen Brown, thanks for joining me today. Uh, Thanks, Izzy. So pleased to be here. So for the people that don't know who you are, do you want to give a little bit of an intro as to who you are and and what you're working on? Sure, sure. So I'm Kathleen Brown, uh, the founder and CEO of Buddy. For anyone that's unfamiliar, it's the digital platform reimagining support for people coping with cancer. Um, I I founded Buddy after about 26 years uh, as a cancer survivor um, and fundraising leader. Uh, I went through cancer treatment when I was a teenager and just found the support community, um, I mean, to be like very overwhelming in like taking care of some of my emotional needs, but at the same time felt like there was a lot of things missing that I could really only relate to other people that had cancer. And in my experience, I found that regardless of when you were diagnosed with cancer, there's always a need for mental and emotional support. And it's so much easier when you feel empowered to open up and talk to people about what you're going through. So I created Buddy really to, to be that support system, not only for me, but lots of people to really um, not just get by, but to get through. What does self-awareness mean to you? I believe just the ability to recognize your emotions and, you know, the, the kind of thought patterns and how they might affect your behavior. For me, I had not always had an easy time recognizing my emotions. And mm-hmm. it's a very complicated thing. Like when you think about in, in my experience, um, and I know for so many others that have been touched by cancer, whether you're a patient or you're a caregiver, you've got to think about it from like a stress response perspective. Like you're in fight or flight mode. You're just like thinking about getting through or just like getting by instead of like, you're not thinking about what comes next after treatment ends. So, you know, I know in my experience as a patient, I was overwhelmed with support from friends and family, from people in, in, in my like neighborhood, you know, school community, if you will. But it wasn't providing me with an authentic way to express what I was going through. Because I think for so many patients or survivors, you hear just endless platitudes, like get well soon and stay strong. You've got this. And that's sort of like, battle language, if you will, isn't helpful when you're feeling just completely overwhelmed with the feelings. So previous to Buddy, I know that you worked in the sports industry. And my experience in the sports industry is this super high stress environment where you're expected to go into work as early as possible, leave as late as possible. And if not, you're look, you're almost frowned upon in some circumstances. So how did that experience And now like building buddy, opening up to how aware you are to your feelings and everything like that. How does that differ from your experience previous where you almost had to push aside those feelings in a sense? What a great question. So um, I think it's, it's made a world of a difference leaving not only the sports industry, but corporate America. Mm Because It's sort of that conditioning of like, stay strong, keep pushing through, you know, work hard, play hard, but not creating space for recognizing emotions and struggles with mental health and certainly not feeling empowered to talk about vulnerabilities. Um, And it's not any knock necessarily about colleagues or or the companies I've worked for so much as working in those environments to just not allow any space for talking about that sort of thing. And um, I think me leaving there and starting to work for St. Jude Uh, about five, I guess now, gosh, that's a little bit longer, 2014, seven years ago, I went to this incredibly compassionate organization, company that truly cared about every single person who worked there. And obviously all the, the patient families that we served. So it was a huge flip for me to go from like sports, kind of like macho environment to, to that. However, I still think being there, there was still a lot of that uh, toxic positivity, if you will, of like, you know, right. Like the St. Jude brand is sunshine and rainbows. And Mm -hmm. I was denying a very big and real part of my cancer experience by being there and not feeling empowered to say, 
hey, I know I'm here speaking on all these stages to raise money, and I'm so happy to do that. But we have to be able to talk about what comes after you leave St. Jude. So when founding Buddy, you led with self-awareness, and your community has seen how self-aware you are and the, the community that you've built is. So how can founders be more self-aware while building their companies? It's tough because the founding journey, particularly if you're solo founder, like it's a roller coaster. And there's there's so many more, in my experience, downs than ups. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's it's giving yourself that grace to know that like this is a marathon, it's not a sprint, and take things day by day. And you know you're not going to be able to um, you know build an empire overnight uh, in the same way that Rome wasn't built overnight, or so the saying goes. Like you have to to be able to roll with the punches, and I think recognizing how you're feeling and what you're going through and how hard of an emotional journey it is can be really helpful. I think building community and like connection to other founders is so helpful. I know in my experience, I've already I've chatted with three of my founder friends this morning and it's so helpful to be able to just say like, is this crazy or what did you, you think about this or how would you approach this? So that's, I mean, self-awareness in the founding startup process is so helpful. Real quick, what's the last book you've read? I just read Seth Rogen's yearbook, highly recommend. Real quick, What's the one thing people don't know about working at ESPN? You get a silver pass. And if you don't know what that is, Google it. Ooh, okay. Uh, Real quick, how can someone tune into your work and follow your journey? Yeah, they can check out highbuddy.com. It's H-I-B-U-D-D-H-I.com. All the links and socials and whatnot are there. Thanks for listening to Real Quick. In this issue, we talk with four different founders on the four elements of authenticity. Check out all the rest of the episodes and other amazing content at intheworks.com.